My name is Maria Simon Sifang. I'm from a very, very tiny island. It's called Kiribati in the Central Pacific, whose maximum height is two to three meters above sea level. I'm a climate advocate. Less experience in campaigning on war, militarism, and peace building. As a person from Kiribati, maybe, perhaps that's okay. Because just like the climate emergency, our discussion of war, August, is formed in response to colonizing attitudes between peoples. The world's dominating powers just view my community, my people, my nation, my culture as expendable. As it is for the climate emergency, so, for war, so too for war, militarism and conflict. Again, the peoples and co cultures of my region are just collateral damage to the greed and cultural narcissism of distant colonizing powers. It's not new. In 1943, we provided the battleground for conflict in the Second World War, the Battle of Tarawa. Fought between Japan and the US was, what was one of the, the bloodiest battles of, of their Pacific War. Although our people did not create that war, many people were killed, injured, mistreated, traumatized, and displaced from their homes. With climate change, that again our people have not created. As we speak, my people are suffering from the impacts of climate change. Due to rising sea level and erosion, people's homes have been destroyed. Inundation is damaging food crops, and our groundwater is becoming brackish. Our ocean is also affected. The coral reefs are dying, our fish stocks are dwindling, dwindling and our fishermen are forced to spend more hours out in the ocean, in the sun, trying to catch fish for their families. Climate change in Kiribati is not just about the rising sea levels. Climate change is gradually destroying our culture, our livelihoods, our lands, and our identity. Climate change is real in Kiribati and is happening right now. The sea is rising, crops and water are affected, and eventually people will be forced to leave their islands. It is unjust that people of Kiribati are some of the lowest emitters of greenhouse gases, gases in the world. Yet, the nation of Kiribati is one of the most affected and vulnerable to countries to the effects of climate change in the world. Australia has a long relationship with Kiribati. To this day, Kiribati and Australia continue to have a reasonably close relationship which is based on, in, on develop, development projects. Kiribati often sees Australia as a big brother in the Pacific. We, there, we therefore hope that when, when Kiribati needs Australia like now in regard to the issue of the negative impacts of climate change, the Australian government will do all it can to help. We ask that it will, tra it will transition away from fossil fuels and fulfill its obligations under the 2015 Paris Accord. War and climate change demand a global leadership. And we urge the Prime Minister of Australia, Mr. Scott Morrison, to take a lead on these issues. War, climate change, and August are further demonstrations of this shame on them. 
for their lack of leadership and ethics. We need an honest partnership and a strong, reliable relationship. That relationship means inclusiveness, respect, consultation, dialogue, and morals. In my opinion, climate change is a disaster, not just for the Pacific Island nations, but for the whole world. Thank you, and may each one of you be blessed with my best traditional blessing, which are the Maori, good health, the Roy, peace, or the Tapumon, and prosperity. Have a blessed Palm Sunday.